Yeah. Battle Spirit Saga did the demo game yesterday. Prepping stuff. Let's check out this Battle Spirit Saga. Alright, so and first you start the game with five life. You start the game with four cores, one including the soul core. You just use this for special effects in the game. And uh, this is your mana right here, your cores. And it plays pretty interestingly. I've done games with the old Battle Spirits, it's much the same. But, uh, and here goes the rules itself. But, yeah, back to the field though. The field, the trash, used cores, they come back at the beginning at the refresh step. And you put your deck right there. Start step, core step, draw step, refresh step, main step, attack step, end step, opponent's turn. And flipping back to the rules. But uh, one thing we couldn't find is does everything have rush? Or haste? Or swiftness? Because I don't really see it in these rules. Man, let's read right here. To finish summoning a spirit or placing a nexus, take cores from the reserve or the field and place them onto the new cards. So you can use cores that are on already things, already alive things on the field to pay for new stuff. So, FYI. Uh, you must place as many cores as indicated by the card's lowest level. Cards without the requisite number of cores are destroyed and placed in your trash. Yeah, it doesn't really say if everything has haste or not. But yeah, let's go through these cards. Alright, Scorch Battlefield. A Nexus, which is like a field spell. Uh, level 1 and 2 during your attack step, all of your red spirits gain 1,000 power, BP. Uh, during your attack step at level 2 when you have 2 cores on it. But this exists with 0 cores on it, so... So, like, you can have this out with nothing and then be good. But, 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 uh, draw a card when you reduce your opponent's life. That's level two. Four drop. And these symbols are the reduction symbols. So, every card you play, it seems like pretty much 99% of the cards you play is going to have a reduction symbol on the bottom right. When you play this, if you have two of those symbols already on the board in the bottom right, then you get to pay two less red. So this will actually only cost two. Spend two cores and put those into the trash. Yeah, let me put those into the trash. Um, and this one can actually exist without any cores on it. But some cards you have to have cores on them for them to exist on the battlefield. But this one requires zero. All right, Dragon Captain, three drop. Uh, two, two reduction right there, and uh, a lot of flavor text. Uh, a level one, 3,000, so that one has to have one core on it to stay alive. And then it becomes a 3,000 attacker. And then level two with two cores on it, it's a 4,000 attacker. With four cores on it, it's a 7,000 attacker. Slash health, two reduction, three drop. Yeah, let's read the flavor. Dragonoids have four arms with only one of them being dominant. And while most of us with two are right-handed, the majority of Dragonoids favor the lower left. Those lucky enough to favor the upper left arm are more dexterous and apparently conferred higher status among their peers. Dragonoids with height, education, and a dominant upper left arm tend to be the most, separ the most celebrated. Sounds like Invader Zim a little bit. All right, uh, Scorch Battlefield. Already read that one. Okay, the big foily, the big rare you get with the starter half deck. Uh, the the Imperial Thunder Dragon Siege Worm six drop with three reduction. Uh, so at level one, two, and three, this has confront where I was told, yeah, your opponents must block if able. So this is a game where you choose to block like magic, but with confront, when this guy attacks, the opponent has to block. And uh, of course, the five life knocks you out after the fifth. Man, and then I think we might have even been playing it. No, we had to play it right. Uh, but anyway, level one, 4,000 attacker slash health. Two with three cores is 6,000. With five cores, it's a 9,000. 
And at level three, you unlock this ability, kind of like a level up in magic. During your attack step, all your spirits with awaken gain confront. Then a uh, dragon captain. Uh, to reduction. Oh yeah, we already read that one. Uh, blazing boar, four drop with one reduction. Uh, one reduction, uh, level one, two thousand, and uh, level one, two, and three. When summoned, select a red spirit card from your trash and return it to your hand. Two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. Rain needle. So one cost, one reduction. So you can basically mostly always play it for free, except for you have to put one core on it for it to live. If you don't put the extra one core on it, then it will just go straight to the trash. Alright, so one is 1,000, two is 3,000, four is 4,000. Uh, charge draw, four drop, two reduction, main, draw two cards, and uh, main, if you flash it, play it on the opponent's turn, then you can select one spirit, it gains 2,000 BP. So you can play this on just your turn, and on the your turn or the opponent's turn, and this is just like a uh, instant slash sorcery card right here spell card four with two reduction uh moonbow dragon four drop with three reduction star dragon it has flash can be played on the opponent's turn and awaken you may remove any number of cores from your other spirits and place them onto this spirit and when destroyed effects are not triggered by this effect so you flash this one in to block and then you take cores off of your stuff so when a guy thinks a guy is going to make you take a loss or whatever, you, you flash this one in. So so at one core, it's uh, 3,000. At four cores, it's 6,000. Seven cores on it, it's 8,000. Dragon Shock. Dragno Shock Troop. Dragonoid. Two drop, one reduction. Awaken. You may remove any number of cores. Same thing as this guy. Same thing as this guy. But uh, one at one, two at three. Well, I mean, three cores, three thousand, four cores, five thousand. Volcanic break. Okay, haven't read that one yet. Uh, this is a main phase or flash. Five drop, two reduction. Select one of your opponent's spirits with three thousand or fewer BP and destroy it. If you spend the soul core, the red one is part of this card's cost. Select a spirit with 6,000 or fewer VP instead. So this will really wreak some havoc right here. Just a great spot removal. Blazing Boar, read you already. Volcanic Break again. Charge Draw, read you already. Uh, Rain Needle, read you already. Landmine. A three drop, one reduction, burst when opponent destroys your spirit. Okay, so this one, burst cards, you put them in the burst zone. Place cards with burst effects here, face down. So, 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 so you can either play it as a burst, basically set it down as a trap without paying anything. Then when the condition is met, you can reveal it, pay the cost, and do the thing. But this one costs three with one reduction. Burst when your opponent destroys your spirit, that's the trigger. And then select one of your opponent's spirits with 3,000 or fewer BP and destroy it. And then you may pay this card's cost to activate its flash effect. And the flash effect is main. Oh, I guess you just get to get it free as the burst effect. But then you can pay this card's cost to activate its flash effect, which is select one spirit against 2,000 BP during your turn. During this turn. Yeah, so three with one reduction, it sounds like. Mainly, it's going to always be two for the most part, unless your board is wiped. That, that's that. Let's put that in the burst zone. Uh, Dragon Trooper, two drop with two reduction. Uh, Dragonoid, uh, level one and two. When this spirit attacks, this spirit gains 2,000 BP. And one core is 1,000. Two cores is 3,000. And when it attacks, it gets plus 2,000. Two with two reduction. It's pretty much free most of the time. You'll just play it when you have two of these already on the field. But you got to have one on it for it to survive. Or else it goes straight to the trash. 
Alright, then we got another landmine. Blade Dino Parasaur. Blade Dino Parasaur. Uh, four drop, two reduction. Pterosaur Spirit. When the Spirit attacks, your opponents must block if able. Same thing, confront. One core on it, 2,000. Three cores on it. It's 5,000. When the Spirit attacks, you may pay the Spirit's soul core to draw a card. So I, I pretty much tend to do that every time. Two of those. Dragon Trooper. Moonbow. Dragon Shock. And Drago Guard. Last one. Uh, three drop, three reduction. So pretty much free if you have any three guys on the board. But you got to keep one on it to keep it alive. Two is 3,000. Four is 5,000. While this spirit attacks, when this spirit destroys one of your opponent's spirits via comparing BP, select one of your opponent's nexuses and destroy it. Nexuses have those little symbols right there. No, this is actually a burst. So nexus. I guess nexus will just say right there, nexus. So, so I mean, it looks like three types of cards. Nexus are your field spells. Uh, magic, maybe your trap cards. No, just burst are your trap cards. Or magic, and then just magic or just instants and sorceries. Well, sorceries, and then it have, has flashed in its uh, instant as well. All right, so that's that. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and read a little bit of this lore, a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, put it right here. You can read it yourself if you want to. But uh, let us rejoice, not anger, that the timeline is being rewritten. We are not correcting a mistake, but sharing a new discovery. J.J. Jenkins. In the year 252 of the Imperial Calendar, the world was faced with unprecedented crisis. Bright red jewels the size of fists rained down from the sky, de demolishing buildings and engulfing the world in flames. The problem lay not in the span of destruction, however, but, but in the nature of the stones. After several years of study, these stones were recognized as dense bodies of energy and given the name soul cores. When a soul core came in contact with the spirit, it infused this energy into the spirit's body. If the spirit endured this energy, it would show unprecedented abilities. It would... Um, but most spirits of that time did not know how to control this energy and were disintegrated. The downpour of red jewels became known as Star Havoc. Rain was recorded as a natural disaster of both fear and despair. Yeah, that's enough of that. But it's right here, like if you want to read it yourself. And the realm of flame dragons, the realm of gloom, purple, the realm of radiance, yellow, the realm of frost white the realm of green a forest green unknown and water is unknown i guess those factions aren't out yet a barren land of volcanoes and rocky deserts inhabited by dragons and dinosaurs within the unified empire this realm serves as the world's police force by maintaining security and safety all right uh, uh, long ago the realms were disparate lands in constant conflict then 250 years ago a hero named called key appeared and ended the wars and unifying the realms into a single peaceful empire under his rule however as many histories have proven peace never lasts two and a half centuries later law and order has grown lax and government corruption has spread and the empire's authority has begun to wane threatening an end to the era six colors Battle Spirit Saga. And I got a, a gameplay coming up tonight. Dig it. Four o'clock. It's going to be Type Liddy. Oh, yo, games. Like, comment, subscribe. Tuvok.